for today's video, I'm going to take some Dollar Tree blanks. These are some of the best blanks that I love DIYing with. If you're shopping through Dollar Tree and you want to pick up some things that you can do really whatever you want with, then these are going to be the things that you want to grab. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel if you guys are new. My name's Liz. For today's video, I'm gonna be taking some Dollar Tree blanks and turning them into beautiful pieces of home decor. A huge thank you to Creative Fabrica for sponsoring today's video. And I'm gonna show you how I use their website to pair with these Dollar Tree blanks to create the most gorgeous DIYs that I personally love so much. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our first DIY. Like I just said, today's sponsor is Creative Fabrica. They are a digital marketplace platform with over 6 million designs for crafters and designers. They provide free and subscription-based content. You can find fonts, crafts, graphics. You can even find patterns to print out so that you can print out some pictures with watercolor images. You can print out pieces on cardstock or some tissue paper that I'm going to show you in today's video. They have tons and tons of bundles, font bundles, image bundles, where you get a ton of different designs all in one download bundle. And I just think it's really great for any kind of crafter, not even just having a Cricut machine. This is for everybody. You don't have to just have a Cricut to use their image they have so many different images that you can use for all sorts of different projects, which I love. You can sign up to get a free trial using my link down below. After the one month free trial, it's $9.99 a month, or you can sign up for their yearly all access pass, which is just $59 for the year, and it comes out to $4.99 a month. So if you want a little bit more savings, you also have that option. I think this is super fun. So I'm going to show you how I use these images that I got from Creative Fabrica to create these DIYs. For this DIY, which is probably my favorite from the entire video, I found this cute and adorable Highland cow wearing a floral crown nursery art on Creative Fabrica's website. I will have all of these files listed down below, so if there's one that you want, you can find it easily but I decided to make this into a decoupage piece. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of tissue paper. This is actually tissue paper from the Dollar Tree. It just comes in a pack of, I believe, 35 pieces. And I'm gonna size this down to a piece of printer paper. So what I did was cut it down. I'm using some washi tape to hold it down to the paper. So I cut my tissue paper just slightly smaller than the printer paper itself, just so that there was enough room that I could attach that tissue paper to the printer paper. I'm going to try to smooth the tissue paper out as best as I can, making sure there are no bubbles or wrinkles. And then I will put that washi tape down to hold it all in place. For the side that is going to go down into my printer, so feeding down through it first, I'm going to put a piece of washi tape across the entire thing. That way there are no snags when it's going through my printer. So I put washi tape all over it and then I just put it through my printer and print it out. So here it is all nice and printed and I think it looks gorgeous. I'm going to take that. I'm also going to take this blank from the Dollar Tree. I had actually painted this white in a previous project that I ended up not doing. So I already had it painted white for me. I'm going to remove my tissue paper print from the printer paper and I am going to cut it down. So I'm going to kind of cut around the cow itself. There wasn't enough to just Mod Podge the entire tissue onto the surface. If I had moved the image down just a little bit, I would have been able to do that. But since I didn't, I decided to just cut around the cow. So I changed my mind several times when doing this DIY. At first, I had antiqued it. I wanted to do a crackle effect with this and the antique, it just wasn't dark enough for my taste. So I decided to grab some Waverly chalk paint and truffle and I painted the front and all four sides in this color. Mm -hmm. 
I let that completely dry and then I'm going in with some Elmer's glue. I am going to go over the entire thing, so the front and all of the sides. While that glue is still wet, I'm going to go ahead and use my Waverly chalk paint in white and I'm going to brush the paint on. Now you want to make sure that your strokes are going in the same direction and I go over the front and the sides with that white paint. Now I'm going to take my heat gun and I am going to heat it on up to dry it and that is what is going to bring those crackles out and I think this looks really fun. I also have just a crackle medium that is from I want to say Folk Art. Don't quote me on that. I'm not positive but either way works. You can buy the crackle medium or you can just do the Elmer's glue technique and I think it's really fun. You can see as my heat gun goes over it all those crackles start coming out and I think it gives it such a fun rustic and farmhouse vibe to it that I'm just obsessed with. After that's dry, I took a little bit of sandpaper to all the edges just to rough it up a little bit more and give it more of a, a distressed look. I don't know if you can give it more of a distressed look with it already looking the way that it is, but that's just a touch that I added. You can skip that step if you want. So you're going to apply a layer of Mod Podge on top of your piece afterwards. You're going to want to make sure that it is completely dry after you've Mod Podged on the top. You're going to set your printed out tissue paper on top of your piece. Again, make sure that your Mod Podge is completely dry and you are going to place your cow where you want it. You're going to take a piece of parchment paper and lay that on top. Now I'm taking my Cricut mini heat press on all the way high and I am going to go over that cow. We are reactivating that Mod Podge, making it sticky again, and making it so that you don't have any bubbles or wrinkles when you're putting your tissue paper on top of your piece. I don't normally like using Mod Podge specifically for those wrinkle and bubble reasons and this technique has completely changed the game for me and I think it looks great. So the last thing I'm going to do is just sand off the little bit of tissue paper that's on the edge do a little bit more distressing since apparently I needed to add, you know, just those final little touches of distressing to my piece. And I just took some brown truffle paint, went around the corners, just a little bit more distressing to the edges. And that is it for this one. I love this so much. If you know me, I love Highland cows. I think they are so gorgeous and I love having these little art pieces in my home and this one is my favorite from this video by far. For this DIY, I found this Spring Quotes bundle. This is an SVG bundle and it comes with all of these different SVGs. I love the bundles specifically that you can get a ton all in one. You're not having to download a ton of different SVGs. You can just do the bundles. So I'm gonna show you how I add it into my Cricut Design Space. You're just gonna click Upload, then click Upload Image. You're gonna click on Browse and then you're gonna find the SVG that you want. So you're going to find that bundle that you downloaded and then find the SVG of your choice. Click open and then your SVG will pop up right there. You can name it, add some tags, click upload, and then it will be in your little um, recent uploads folder right there. You can click on it and click add to canvas and then it is right there on your screen. All you got to do is resize it. I just wanted to give an example of how to upload it to your design space if you're using a Cricut. I am going to choose another image from this same bundle. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my blank, which is this 12 inch wood round. I love these wood rounds, especially doing door hangers and fun signs. So I'm just going to measure it out and then I'll measure out how big I need my image to be. I'm going to use some black permanent vinyl. This is the Starcraft vinyl, which I do get from expressions final. It's also where I get my transfer tape that I love the most and I always have those linked down below if you guys are ever interested. I love the transfer tape that I get off there the best. I also like the Oracle vinyl from there. It's some of the best in my opinion. So I just cut out my image 
and I'm going to go through and weed it. After I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and paint my wood round. I just painted it with my Waverly chalk paint in white and gave it one good coat. I added my vinyl to my transfer tape, centered it onto my sign, and then I will just remove that transfer tape. I added the twine back into the round, and that's all I'm going to do for this. I'm going to keep it super simple and just, you know, really easy to do, and I think this looks really cute paired with a wreath on your front door, or you could pair it with a wreath in your home, or you can just hang it wherever you want. I think that this is really cute. Do Doing DIYs does not have to be super complicated. You can make it as simple and as easy as you want it to be. And this one was a piece of cake and I love the way it turned out. For this DIY, I grabbed the vintage rustic farmhouse utensil prints off of Creative Fabrica. I think these are super pretty and either printing them on regular paper or printing them on tissue paper like I am would look amazing. So I'm going to grab my blank from the Dollar Tree. This is their little houses and I'm going to use the back as the front. I'm going to paint it with my Waverly chalk paint in white, just giving it one good coat on the front. I left the sides alone because I wanted them to have that wood look to them paired with the white. I'm going to add my layer of Mod Podge on top of my house, just smoothing that all over the entire front, and I'm going to let that completely dry. You can use your heat gun to speed up the process if you'd like. Now I'm going to take my image that I printed out onto some tissue paper, and I'm going to center that onto my house, add a piece of parchment paper on top, grab our mini press on high, and I'm going to go over the entire thing, smoothing it out middle to the sides, trying to get all of the wrinkles and bubbles, make sure that they are not in there. I'm going to reactivate that Mod Podge so that the tissue paper sticks to our piece, and then I will use some sandpaper to remove all the excess tissue paper from the house. That's it for this one super easy really cute i love these prints so much like i said these printed out onto some cardstock and put it into a frame would look beautiful i just love the way this turned out This next DIY, surprise, surprise, another Highland Cow. I am just obsessed, but this is a Highland Cow with Sunflowers SVG. I'm going to cut this out on my Cricut for the blank. I'm going to take this $3 wooden canvas. This comes from their more expensive section, their plus section. I personally don't have any in my stores. I got this in a pack online and shipped it to my house. So I like these so much because I love the wood and I think that they look very high end when you have finished them all. So to paint this piece, I'm gonna take my Waverly Wax in Antique and I am going to stain all of the sides, so the frame and the backing. I like using the wax as a stain because it's not smelly and I can use it inside my craft room without having to deal with any of those fumes and I just treat it like a normal stain. I'm gonna wipe it on and then I will wipe off the excess. For the middle of my sign, I am going to paint it white. I just did one coat. I just tried to go around the edges as best as I can to not get any white paint on the frame, and I just painted the entire middle. Next, I wanted to do a faux shiplap, faux wood kind of look to this, so I'm taking a wooden paint stir stick. I cut it down to be the size of the inside of my frame, and I am taking a brown paint pen and just using that paint stir stick as a guide to draw lines on my sign. I also wanted to do some vertical lines, so I'm just taking that same paint pen and my paint stir stick to get some straight lines on there, and I just kind of did this randomly, no pattern to it, just wherever I felt like a line needed to be. I'm gonna go through with the back of my paintbrush, dipping it into some brown paint, and I am making those little nail holes on each of those vertical lines. I'm gonna rough it up a little bit with some sandpaper. I wanted this to have a more faded look to it, so I'm just going to use my sandpaper to go over the entire thing and make it look a little bit more rustic and distressed. 
I cut out my vinyl, weeded it, added it to my transfer tape, and centered it onto my sign. And then I will just peel that transfer tape off, and you get this really cute farmhouse sign with your highland cow and some sunflowers that I just love. I think this is absolutely adorable. Again, I love highland cows, so it's got to be one of my favorites. It was so much fun to do, and it was really easy to create this beautiful piece. Okay, this is the last of our Highland Cow DIYs, I promise, but I just had to throw this one in there as a little bit of a bonus. This is a muted watercolor Highland Cow that I think is so gorgeous. Now, I said this one is a little bit of a bonus because this isn't a Dollar Tree blank. I couldn't find a blank that would fit this image, and I really wanted to throw this image in in today's video. So I had these blanks from Hobby Lobby that are more rectangular. They are very similar to the wooden canvas that we did in our previous project. If you can find something similar at Dollar Tree, definitely use that. But I'm using what I got and I had to throw this one in today's video. It is just gorgeous. So I printed the image out on a piece of cardstock paper just using a regular old inkjet printer. I'm going to start painting our piece using some Waverly Wax in Antique. I'm going around the entire frame using that just like a stain. So I'm going to stain the frame and the backing of the sign. For the middle, I'm going to paint it with my Waverly chalk paint in white. And I just gave that one quick coat. Now for our image, because this is too large and it's not going to fit into our sign, plus the corners were rounded so they weren't going to fit perfectly into the sign. I decided I wanted to make this look a little bit more distressed. So I'm going to start ripping the edges and I ripped it enough to the point where I could fit it into the sign and have a little bit of white showing through on the back. It wasn't the perfect fit. You want it just a little bit less um, than the size of the back of the sign. Hopefully that makes sense, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm going to go over the entire sign. We are going to use the iron-on technique for this. So I'm going to Mod Podge it, let the Mod Podge completely dry, add my image to the sign, and then use my mini Cricut heat press to reactivate that Mod Podge and get our image to stick. Now, I wasn't totally sure if this was going to work. I'd seen some people say that with an inkjet printed image, you need to take some extra steps. I did not want to take those extra steps. <laughs> I was being a little bit lazy. So I decided to just try it out, see what happened. And I had no issues. So I'm not sure exactly if other people have issues using their inkjet printer when doing this method, but I had none. All the ink stayed on my print perfectly and it worked really great. So after I've done that, I'm going to take my Waverly Wax and Antique on a chip brush and I wanted this to be a little bit more rustic. You could leave it as is with just the white background, but I decided to rough it up just a little bit more. So I'm just dabbing around the entire picture and that's it. This is it for this DIY. I love this one so much. That's all the Highland Cows <laughs> in this video. Let me know if you love Highland Cows as much as I do and which of the three Highland Cow DIYs is your favorite. Let me know in the comments below. For this DIY, a really simple farmhouse SVG. 
This is so easy to do. You're just going to download it, upload it to Cricut, and cut it out. I'm going to weed my letters, and I'm going to take this shiplap blank from the Dollar Tree. I love this one so much. Very farmhouse, and the word farmhouse fit perfectly with this sign. So all you're going to do is take your vinyl, add it to your transfer tape. Again, this comes from Expressions Vinyl, and I'm going to center this into my sign as best as I can remove the transfer tape and that's it. You have a super cute farmhouse sign that took you maybe five minutes to do. Like I said before, crafting does not have to be complicated. It can be as simple and quick as you want it. And I love this piece for being super simple. For this DIY, I found these floral bee watercolor clip art. Again, this is in a bundle. So you get several different images in your download. And I love bees. I love decorating with them for summer. I think they are just so cute. I'm going to take this wooden tag that comes from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to give the front one coat of my Waverly chalk paint in white. I printed out my images using the tissue paper technique. Again, I just taped some tissue paper to some printer paper and printed out my image. I'm going to cut around my image, trying to make it as round as possible. I will add some Mod Podge on top of my wooden tag. I let that completely dry. Again, we're doing the iron on method, which I think works really well using tissue paper. And I'm going to add my tissue paper to my tag, use my parchment paper on top of that, and the iron on top of that reactivating that Mod Podge and you get a really wrinkle-free product every time, which I love. I feel like I'm repeating myself a billion times, but I love this method so much since I did my napkin DIYs. If you didn't see that, I'll leave it linked down below, but I am loving the decoupage and iron-on method. I just think it's so much fun. And then to finish off my tag, I just distressed it using some Waverly Wax and Antique, and that is it. I think this looks so cute, and it's going to look adorable paired with all of my bee decor setup that I'm going to do on my front entryway table for the summer and I just think it's adorable. And that's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know which project was your favorite in the comments down below. Don't forget that I'll have a Creative Fabrica's link down in my description box where you can get a free trial to try out Creative Fabrica on your own and do some DIYs with them. See how you like it. Like I mentioned before, this is great for anybody. It doesn't have to just be if you have a Cricut or not. You can use a lot of these things without a Cricut, just like I showed you in today's video. So again, I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and join our little crafting family here on YouTube. Give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel and helps me to grow and that's all I got for you. I hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in my next one. Bye!